I've represented police unions since 1997. There was a story in the New York Times this week about the man who's credited with writing the playbook for police union negotiations, finally having a moment and becoming aware that the way that he did things, the way he did business in the past in negotiating for police is probably not gonna be effective as we move into the next decade. In the past, police officers used various intimidation tactics to get what they needed at the bargaining table. Now, I'm a believer that at the bargaining table and in negotiations, the playing field is level and any tactic that one uses, as long as it's within the boundaries of the law, is acceptable. And I still believe that. I don't endorse illegal activity at the bargaining table, but anything that is legal can be done. The question though becomes whether or not using intimidation tactics is a wise move at the bargaining table, particularly in today's environment where not just police, but mostly police unions are under greater scrutiny for how their members behave in the performing of their jobs. In my opinion, unions, police unions, teachers unions, public works unions, all unions really, have to adjust how they go about bargaining for their members. The goal is and always will be to get the best contract possible for the members, to protect the members' livings, to ensure that they get good wages and benefits. But the way to go about that is not through intimidation anymore. It simply won't be tolerated. Good unions and good union leaders will recognize this and they will adjust their tactics and their strategies to account for the world we live in today. I think that's important and I think the unions that are able to adapt are going to be able to continue to provide for their members.